Hello everyone, I'm Jensine Bard, and welcome to Testimony, where truth is told, lives are changed, and hope is given. Revelation 12:11 tells us that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, a testimony of your story for His glory. From a life of abuse to healing, to saving lives. My next guest reveals the secret he would house for 73 years, until now, and the forgiveness he would need to break free, as chronicled in his long-awaited memoir, Unchained. But that's just the tip of all you will hear in this riveting true story of a man called to the, quote, least of these. From the comfort of his easy chair, to the nations of the world, and the heart-wrenching, harrowing, yet hopeful miracles that would follow because he said yes when God Almighty said go, and the rest, as you will also soon hear, made history. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome to Testimony a great honor indeed, heralded by Newsweek as one of America's unsung heroes recipient of the World Service Medal by Kiwanis International, joining notable past recipients Nancy Reagan and Audrey Hepburn. The 1,000 Points of Light Award presented by President George W. Bush and others, including two honorary doctorates, and rightly so, honoring the work of the millions of lives changed the organization he would found to do just that, Medical Teams International. Please welcome its founder, businessman, humanitarian, and author of his latest must-read, Unchained, A Man's Journey from Abuse to Healing to Saving Lives. Please welcome Dr. Ron Post. Dr. Post, Ron, if I may, welcome to Testimony. Thank you, and Ron is great, and it's good to be with you, JC. Well, thank you, Ron, and it is an honor to have you. First of all, I have to say what a pleasure it is to give voice to someone whose life has literally become the healing hands and feet of Jesus through the organization you founded called Medical Teams International for the past 40 plus years, uh, which has given aid to some of the most desperate and desolate places and people on this planet, case in point, Cambodia, and what was then termed by national news as, quote, the killing fields. That began for you an ordinary day on a newsworthy day from your easy chair to a God adventure of a lifetime and miraculously so, can you explain? Well, Jensen, it was a God thing. Uh, It was 1979. My wife and I were watching the nightly news in our West Salem, Oregon home when the news came on about the killing fields of Cambodia and we saw them picking up many bodies uh, and one of them they picked up out of a rice field appeared to be a teenage girl that had maybe starved to death. And at the time, I looked over on the uh, couch where my then teenage daughter was laying, and I thought, oh, Lord, that could have been my daughter. Why was I so blessed to be born in America? I could have been born in Cambodia, and that could have been my daughter. And as I pondered that, It was like someone had walked up and given me a written plan that I was to raise up a medical team and take them to help these people, and I was to do it in two weeks. Wow. I questioned that. (laughs) Lord, is that from you? Because that seems impossible. I finally blurted it out to my wife, Jean, and she said, yes, honey, we need to do this, we need to help them. So it was kind of confirmation, and that was the first step I took of getting up out of my easy chair, 
to do something that God wanted me to do. And really, in the reading of your book, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Dr. Ron Post, his latest must-read, Unchained. Uh, It took a couple of phone calls, a 24-hour period, and what happened next? You were not a medical doctor. You had never been on the mission field. You're a successful entrepreneur. Uh, By all accounts, you've been there, done that, and done it all. Uh, But now God is asking you to do something more. How did this happen? Well, again, the Lord, He opened the doors. Whenever God wants you to do something, He'll open the doors. You just have to go through them. And so He opened the door of contacting the media, and uh, the media responded. Uh, I held a press conference uh, that was recommended to me, and uh, it was a very tense press conference because I was with a a couple of uh, missionary doctors that I had uh, wanted to meet with that day to ask them questions, and they had been telling me, you can't do this in two weeks. Um, it would take a long time for doctors to leave their practices, nurses to leave their job. You can't do this in two weeks. It would take several months. And uh, and so <laughs> through that meeting, it was, it was pretty tense until my own personal doctor sitting down at the other end of the table wanted to ask me a question, and I think God did the rest, because he said, well, Ron, if a doctor called you uh, and um, asked you about this and said, uh, how soon do you want to go? I I said to him, uh, can you go right now? <laughs> it's something like that. He had misunderstood it, and he said, oh, yeah, I can go. And that changed the whole mood of the meeting that day, and and it became more positive, and yes, maybe we can do it. And the the media asked me a lot of questions, and one reporter said, do you really think you can do this in two weeks? And I said, do you believe in God? And this report from this big newspaper said, Mm -hmm. well, yes. And I said, then it will be done. And she actually used that quote in the paper. So that's how it happened. And yes, we had a medical team of 27 people in the air within two weeks to the refugee camp uh, to help the Cambodians. Quite miraculous. Um, The accounts you chronicle are some of the most horrific and unimaginable that I've read concerning your attempts to give medical and humanitarian aid. Can you just talk about one of those cases that comes to mind and the faith it took to not only get you there, but keep you there long after most would have left and happily so, I might add. You you didn't, you stayed, as did your team, donors and support, and all those called to the mission you tirelessly advocated for, gave, and successfully so. Well, I have to first say before I tell you that story that my story does describe the the incredible volunteers who left the comfort of their homes to travel great distances and leave their homes and live in harsh conditions in order to save lives. And the book has so many stories of those incredible medical volunteers. But one story that I God impressed upon me was about 1985, the great famine of Ethiopia was taking place, where somewhere around 200,000 people died of starvation. And we took our medical team there to help them, and we operated in a number of different uh, refugee camps there helping them. And in one of them in particular where I, I was at, uh, we were operating a intensive feeding center uh, for malnourished babies. And we could only take 200 to 250 new cases per day. And yet every morning there was about 1,400 women with their babies who lined up hoping to be admitted to that intensive feeding center, all of them malnourished. The nurses would go down through the the line of babies, feeling between the fingers of the babies for fat content. 
And then from that, they would decide which ones were the worst cases. Uh, and then after just making the selection, they would go off in a corner and really cry because they knew that some of them that they didn't pick would probably be dead by the next morning. They were so malnourished. And yet we could only take that many a day and accommodate it. And uh, so as I was watching one morning, I saw in the distance two elderly ladies coming towards me. In each hand, they held a little black bucket. And obviously they were coming to try to get food. They were so emaciated. It really was just skin stretched over bone. And they came right up in front of me. And one lady, shortly after coming up in front of me, fell to the ground in front of me at my feet. The nurses tried to help that lady, but she died right there on the ground. Mm. Someone took a picture and later gave me that picture of her laying on the ground. And I keep it to this day, but I really, in a way, don't even need it because the picture will always remain in my mind. She's laying on her side, and a few inches from her hand is that empty bucket. And God impressed upon me that, Ron, I want you to go home and tell your people that there are millions of empty buckets in our world that need filled. And I call you to fill them. You, the American people, you, the family of God, to fill buckets everywhere. There's empty buckets in our country. There's empty buckets overseas. There's empty buckets of despair and hunger and illness and all kinds of things that people need filled. And I'm telling people now, take from your bucket and fill someone else's bucket. You'll see that theirs begins to fill and you see, you will see that yours never goes dry. But that's the message that God gave me from that, from that experience. And I've been telling that story ever since. Amen and amen. Ladies and gentlemen, again, you're listening to Dr. Ron Post, his latest must-read memoir, Unchained. Uh, Dr. Post, I want to switch gears just a little bit. This is also a part of your uh, very powerful, impactful, and riveting book, I must say. We understand the effects of abuse, which you explain in Unchained, and how it can, quote, shut a person down and up, as it did for you for 73 years, despite your success as a business entrepreneur, and some might say overachiever in life and in Christ. Talk about that and the freeing that came when you chose to forgive the perpetrator, plus the freeing it would bring to others, namely, your beloved gene of blessed memory, whom you dedicate your book, Unchained. Thank you. Um, yes, I did, I did suffer childhood abuse, um, at first by my father, who was going through a difficult time in his life, and I didn't know until later on how difficult it was, but unfortunately, he took that out on uh, several children, including me and the family. He later was able to turn his life around, and I'm so thankful for my father turning his life around. But the things I'm trying to tell people today is the harsh words that young people hear as a child from their parents never leave. And it can destroy confidence. It can lead to a life of self-destruction. And we, we need to ask ourselves as parents, am I providing a safe, secure, encouraging, and loving environment for my spouse and for my children? Or am I really igniting fear, bitterness, and discouragement in them? And that's the message I have for parents today. And uh, at the, then another thing that happened in my life during that time, about between the age of eight, eight and 10, I was sexually abused. And I was told, don't tell anybody. 
or you'll get hurt. And you know, a child like that believed it. Right. And I held it in for years and years and years and wouldn't tell anybody until um, just a few years ago, actually. But the process in my life was that I, I went through a lot of difficulty in my growing up because of that. And um, the thing that saved me was one Sunday night going down an aisle at the First Baptist Church of Oxnard, California, and giving my life to Jesus Christ. And I was 27 years old. And God began to change me from the inside out. But it took another seven years for me to, to get the attention from God that I had not forgiven those who did that to me. Mm. And so one night, yeah. I got on my knees, and I said, God, I forgive those who hurt me, and I pray, Lord, you will forgive them. And when I got up, I literally felt like a new creation. I, I really did. Mm. It, it changed me in, in, a, in a moment. And uh, I, I know now mm. that had I not forgiven those who hurt me, God would not have called me to begin a great work in my life later on. And uh, in fact, you know, the Bible is so clear about that. It says, if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sin. We need to understand that. Even many Christians today harbor unforgiveness. And God is saying, I can't even forgive you if you can't forgive your brother. And so it's pretty important to do that. And I'm telling people today that if you've had childhood sexual abuse, please know that you can recover. You can have a life of meaning and purpose. Don't let the ones that hurt you keep you from being everything God wants you to be. And I tell them, you cannot change the past, but you can change the future. So um, you can have a meaningful life. But it took me then after doing that in the early 1970s of forgiving them, it still took me many, many years until one day about three or four years ago, the Lord said, you need to tell your family. They need to know what your life was then versus what it is now. And so I gathered my family and told them what had happened in my life. And yes, it shocked them, but now they understand. Well, praise God. And one of the ones that you shared was your wife, Jean, who you recount in your book, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Dr. Ron Post in his latest must read, Unchained. Um, share with us her thoughts as you shared your story. Well, actually, uh, I had a, quite a surprise after telling my wife. She looked at me and she said, Honey, thank you for telling me because I want you to know that I had some abuse as a little girl. Someone touched me inappropriately and it really hurt me for many years. And so it was freeing for her to hear that. Right. And of, of course, she became such a part of Medical Teams International, helped out so much, worked so hard. Um, and I'm, I'm so thankful for her, even though last December 5, she went to be with the Lord uh, through dementia. And I miss her terribly but I have such great memories of 63 years of marriage. That is remarkable. Ladies and gentlemen, again, you're listening to Dr. Ron Post, his latest must read, Unchained. And your wife, your beautiful gene of blessed memory, she helped, uh, she helped put conferences or banquets together, I should say, to raise uh, money on a regular basis. So she was really in her element and in her gifting and you talk about that in your book the different ways i like to say not everyone is called to be quote boots on the ground missionaries but we can send those 
who are with our finances, our prayer, uh, our support. Talk about what you are doing now in the organization you co-founded called missioninquease.org and why supporting those advancing the gospel of Jesus Christ can be just as worthy and the biblical training your organization provides for nonprofits to do just that. Yes, in 1999, uh, the Lord called me away from Medical Teams International because he had another organization he wanted me to begin. Um, in our country, uh, nonprofit Christian organizations struggle with trying to raise funds. And uh, they also, uh, there's a divide between the church and the parachurch uh, historically. And God called me and a couple of dear friends of mine, Dale and Gail Stockham, to begin a work in helping those Christian ministries learn biblical fundraising, learning how to treat a donor as not just a giver, but a partner in their ministry, and then how that will grow their ministry. And it started out in a borrowed office space of about five by five, and it has now grown to uh, training centers all over America in major cities where there's training going on for the Christian ministries in that area, training them in biblical fundraising and church relations so that they can learn to partner with the church because that's what God would want them to do. And uh, so it, it, we're training somewhere around uh, 3,500 ministries a year now in this country, and they're growing by leaps and bounds. And so I, I've really been able to multiply myself over and over and over by helping these ministries, and we do not charge for it. It's free. Uh, it, it, we give free workshops in all the different aspects of fundraising that they can come and receive a good education in it uh, so that they can grow their ministry. And it's been tremendous, uh, the response. And uh, in fact, just recently, uh, uh, two men arrived from England and are investigating mission increase uh, as far as taking it back to England and starting Mission Increase England. And uh, we're, we're quite excited about that. And uh, that, that organization is called Mission Increase. It's our job to increase the, the mission in this country. Amen and amen. And I loved what you shared uh, in your book about uh, this type of an organization that instead of incurring competition, it eliminates competition. Because at the end of the day, aren't we all on the same team, Dr. Ron Post, in advancing the gospel yes. of Jesus Christ? We are. And, you know, historically, uh, Christian nonprofits uh, weren't good at speaking to each other uh, <laughs> because of the dollar. You know, the, they, they see right. it as a competition in a way. We have broken down those barriers. We have brought them together in workshops, and they begin to talk to each other and say, oh, wow, can you help me or can I help you? And so they're helping each other now rather than pulling apart from each other. And that's what the body of Christ should be. That is just tremendous. You know, I'm part of the National Religious Broadcasters. I just feel I wanted to share this with you on air. And I can't think of a better organization for your organization uh, to plant a post for those that are there and give them the opportunity to come alongside and, and get involved. Is that something that you might consider or have you already considered that? Oh, absolutely. They can contact Mission Increase directly uh, by calling them, but also going on their website to www.missionincrease.org. Mission Increase, one word, dot org. There's opportunities to help Mission Increase, and there's opportunities for, for ministry to see the website and, and find out how they can begin to get help. That's fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, again, you're listening to Dr. Ron Post, his latest must-read, Unchained, A Man's Journey from Abuse 
to healing, to saving lives. Revelation 12, 11 states that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And Dr. Ron Post, you have done this and exceedingly so, not in just one God adventure, but now your second God adventure. And what a legacy you are leaving. Any last thoughts of encouragement for our listeners today? Yes, thank you. One last very important thing that, that is in this book is encouraging Christians to serve. And, you know, Ephesians 2.10 says, We are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good work, which God prepared in advance for us to do. He programmed us to do that. And so my book shows people, the reader, how to find joy in serving those who have so much less and what it does for your life when you do that. It affirms them. Amen and amen. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to internationally renowned humanitarian, businessman, and author, his long-awaited memoir, Unchained, A Man's Journey from Abuse to Healing to Saving Lives, Dr. Ron Post. You could learn more about Dr. Post's work, ministry, and mission by visiting ronpost.org and missionincrease.org and get his inspiring memoir, Unchained. You will be exceedingly blessed, challenged, and ignited for life and in Christ that you did. Dr. Post, Ron, sir, what an absolute joy and honor having you share your very personal, real, and raw a memoir that not only chronicles your worldwide work and acclaim achieved because of it, but also chronicles the way forward you chose through forgiveness. When the enemy sought to take you out through shame and abuse, he failed. You are a winner in life and in Christ, and beautifully so. Your riveting memoir, Unchained, shows us all how and powerfully so. We thank you, and God bless you. Thank you for this time. And uh, when they go to ronpost.org, they can order the book there and also receive weekly free devotion. Thank you. God bless you. Testimony is a global broadcast made possible by the generous contributions of our valued partners at Jensen Bard Ministries and you, our listening audience. Together, we are reaching souls for Christ, one testimony at a time. If you would like information on how you can support this broadcast with your tax-deductible gift, please visit us at jensenbard.com. That's one word, J-E-N-S-I-N-E-B-A-R-D dot com. And join the conversation at our Facebook page, Testimony with Jensen Bard. Thank you for listening, and please join us again for Testimony. Testimony.